So imagine a cube six miles across deep and high, and that's how much lava came out. The western region of the U.S. is home to a sleeping monster. It periodically stirs, but it hasn't awoken from its sleep in about 70,000 years. Scientists such as Neil deGrasse Tyson worry that when it does awaken, it may wreak havoc on the world, drastically changing everything we know. In a stunning revelation that has shaken the scientific community, the Yellowstone National Park Monitoring System has now recorded an unprecedented event, a sudden 250% surge in activity. As news of this sudden surge spreads, fear and curiosity grip the hearts of millions worldwide. But what does this mean for the fragile balance of Earth's most iconic national park? Is Yellowstone's dormant supervolcano awakening from its centuries-long slumber? Join us as we explore Neil deGrasse Tyson's warning that a 100 feet wide crack just opened the Yellowstone volcano. The oldest national park in the world, Yellowstone is not merely a treasure of the United States. Yellowstone, which opened its doors in 1872, spans 3,472 square miles across three states. Nearly three million people visit the park each year to take in the breathtaking natural scenery, which features the old faithful geyser as well as numerous hiking trails, mountain peaks, and hot springs. Not to mention the variety of wildlife such as grizzly bears, moose, elk, beavers, and bighorn sheep that make the park home. But beneath the surface of this haven for outdoor enthusiasts, there lies another natural marvel that could make the park extinct. The Yellowstone supervolcano, which is miles below the surface of the park, is a significant source of granitic magma. For those who enjoy the outdoors and numerous people who live close to the park, a full explosion would be devastating news. That magma chamber has occasionally erupted over history. The last eruption at Pitchstone Plateau took place about 70,000 years ago, and the vast great bulk of those eruptions in Yellowstone have been smaller lava flows. However, the remote probability of disastrous super eruptions is the reason Yellowstone receives so much attention. A super eruption is defined as any eruption with a volcano explosivity index magnitude of 8 or above and an ejection volume of at least 240 cubic miles. That would bury Texas five feet beneath the surface. Even the largest eruptions we are accustomed to are thousands of times less powerful than these super eruptions. A heated region of rock that is molten or semi-molten and is known as magma lies beneath the ground above the Yellowstone supervolcano. The ground swells as magma flows into a magma chamber or reservoir that is located four, six miles under the park. The ground collapses as the magma starts to harden and cool. Volcanologists, who have been monitoring this activity since 1923, estimate that between 2004 and 2009, the ground rose by around 9.8 inches. But in 2010, the ground started to sink. Many experts, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, are speculating as to whether Yellowstone may erupt soon, given its recent period of gradual, steady growth. Concerns have been raised regarding the potential intensity of the eruption if it occurs. What to expect if Yellowstone begins to tremble tomorrow is the big question. A 500-year flood occurred in Yellowstone on the morning of June 13, 2022. In 24 hours, the northern areas of the park received 7.59.5 inches of rain and snowmelt combined. The north entrance road between Mammoth Hot Springs, Wyoming, and Gardner, Montana, as well as three parts of the northeast entrance road between Lamar Valley and Cook City, Silver Gate, Montana, were both completely devastated by the flood. The park was able to repair damaged wastewater lines, restore power within 48 hours, and plan for recovery and the eventual restart of operations. Nine days after the flood catastrophe, on June 22, 2022, the park's South Loop reopened. Over the course of the summer, more road and backcountry trail segments opened as repairs went on. However, the degree of recent subterranean activity feeds conjecture about how powerful an eruption will be. The volcano has risen at the quickest rate ever observed over the last 10 years. In addition, 
Yellowstone experiences between 1,000 and 3,000 earthquakes a year. Most have magnitudes of three or less, making them essentially undetectable. However, these earthquakes help scientists understand how quickly the magma chamber beneath the park is expanding. A recent infusion of magma into the reservoir may be indicated by an increase in the shaking and rattling heard throughout the park. Geologists find it challenging to forecast what exactly is happening in Yellowstone because no one has been around to thoroughly examine everything that takes place there. Examining the volcano's distant past does offer a hint of sorts. According to geologic data, Yellowstone has seen three massive eruptions in the last 2.1 million years. According to volcanologists, the eruptions happened at intervals of between 600,000 and 800,000 years. The last major event is thought to have occurred about 640,000 years ago, and there is evidence of it throughout the park and thousands of kilometers of the surrounding area. The majority of the continental United States was blanketed in large volumes of volcanic ash, gas, magma, and other volcanic debris from each of the prior eruptions. There have been some materials discovered as far away as Louisiana. Following each of these eruptions, the Yellowstone supervolcano fell in on itself, engulfing the surrounding terrain, including all of the trees, mountains, and other features. Calderas are the depressions created by this occurrence. In actuality, the Yellowstone caldera and Yellowstone supervolcano share the same name. In Yellowstone, a caldera forming eruption would pose a huge natural hazard. According to scientists, the most recent Yellowstone explosion was 1,000 times more powerful than the infamous 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption, which destroyed hundreds of square kilometers of land in Washington and Oregon, and claimed the lives of 56 humans and thousands of animals. The last eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano sent a deadly plume of hot ash, molten rock, and deadly gases thousands of meters into the air thousands of years ago there's a good chance that the entire continent went completely dark. Fast-moving currents of hot, dry rock fragments and gases known as pyroclastic flows raced through the area at startling rates, burying or crushing anything in their path. The once beautiful scenery was scorched for miles by magma erupting from the earth. The 30 miles wide and 45 miles long, Yellowstone caldera itself contains some remnants of the most recent eruption. In a region known as the Lava Creek Tuff, one can still observe the thick volcanic debris that was left over after the eruption. Geologists have discovered evidence of at least 47 super-eruptions throughout Earth's history. Therefore, Yellowstone is not the only supervolcano in the world. The most recent took place about 26,000 years ago at Lake Taupo in New Zealand. More significantly, the tectonic plate movement led to the enormous Toba eruption that occurred 74,000 years ago. According to others, this precipitated a severe 6-10 to 10 year global winter and may have all but wiped off the human species. Although it's not an unbreakable rule, the Earth has typically experienced one super eruption every 100,000 years. How might a Yellowstone eruption appear then? A minor eruption in Yellowstone that resulted in lava flows and perhaps a normal volcanic explosion is the eruption scenario that is most likely to occur. As the magma rose to the surface, this would probably be caused by a cluster of earthquakes in a particular area of the park. Now, the warning indicators would be considerably more obvious in the event of a much larger super eruption. Neil deGrasse Tyson, predicted that the entire park would likely experience significant earthquake activity first. Before an eruption, it might take those earthquakes weeks or months to fracture the rocks above the magma. What if we had a super eruption, which was 1,000 times more powerful than a typical volcanic eruption, spewed at least 240 cubic miles of material, lasted weeks or months, and it was characterized by prolonged activity? Within the park, the lava flows themselves would be restricted to a circumference of about 40 kilometers. In actuality, only about one-third of the material would enter the atmosphere. Volcanic ash, a mixture of shattered rock and glass, which was thrown kilometers into the air and dispersed throughout the nation, would cause the majority of the damage. Scientists came to the conclusion that an eruption would produce an umbrella cloud that would grow evenly in all directions based on past ash dumps 
as well as sophisticated modeling. This discovery actually caught us off guard. The Northern Rockies may theoretically be covered in three feet of ash by a super eruption, which would obliterate major portions of Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah. A few inches of ash would fall on the Midwest at the same time, and much less would fall on the coasts. The precise distribution would be based on the season and the weather. Any of those possibilities would be awful news. Ash and debris don't seem like such a bad thing, do they? In fact, it only takes three to four feet of ash to completely damage infrastructure, buildings, and modes of public transit. Many, many lives would be lost, and air traffic would come to a complete stop. Even a small amount of ash can have fatal effects on the respiratory system, make driving hazardous, and cause the death of several crops and animals. Most of North America would have to stop using airplanes. A volcanic eruption would be easy to predict based on how many earthquakes it was preceded by. Even though there are already a lot of earthquakes in Yellowstone National Park every year, they are nothing compared to the tremors that precede an eruption. Evacuations would be required because it would be clear that the park and the adjacent villages had been destroyed. Lava flows should assist the Yellowstone volcano make its message if earthquakes weren't clear enough. Thankfully, lava flows can't spread as far as ash can, and blazing hot lava is most likely to harm a maximum of 50 miles of Yellowstone National Park. In contrast to blazing hot lava, there is one more unexpected consequence that volcanic eruptions have on our planet an exponential drop in temperature. Such a large volcanic eruption would also have significant impacts on the world's climate. Sulfur aerosols released by volcanoes can reflect sunlight back into the atmosphere, lowering temperatures. There is no way to predict the exact amount of ash and debris that will be discharged into the air during a Yellowstone volcanic eruption given its possible scale. Any level of volcanic activity, though, sends particles into our atmosphere that deflect and prevent glaring sunlight and UV rays. This results in a drop in temperature, and a Yellowstone supervolcano may spew forth enough of these particles to significantly lower the planet's temperature for several years. Given the current temperature of the Earth, this may sound like a good thing, but the abrupt change to cooler temperatures would probably be disastrous enough to change crop and agricultural production. No matter how powerful it turns out to be, a supervolcano eruption the likes of which Yellowstone may conceivably create will change the planet. If the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt, molten rock just below the surface of the ground would start to melt as a result of heat rising from the planet's core. As a result, a brew of magma, rocks, vapor, carbon dioxide, and other gases would be produced. The pressure finally forced the ground up into a dome shape and produced fissures around the borders as the mixture accumulated and grew over thousands of years. The dissolved gases would blow up when the pressure was released via the fractures, quickly spreading the magma across the park. A 10-foot coating of molten ash may be projected to extend 1,000 miles away from the park and kill as many as 90,000 people instantly. Rescuers would undoubtedly have difficulty entering. Similar to what happened in Iceland in 2010, when a much smaller volcano erupted, the ash would seal off all points of entrance from the ground, and the spread of ash and gases into the atmosphere would halt the majority of air transport. When Pinatubo erupted in 1991, it temporarily lowered Earth's temperature by around 1 degree Celsius. A few regions may have experienced famines as a result of the Tambora eruption in 1815, which caused enough cooling to harm crops all over the world. It's challenging to imagine the magnitude of a volcanic super-explosion. Many of us recall the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, which sent ash as far as the center of the United States and smaller particles all over the world. However, the amount of ash and debris created by the Mount St. Helens eruption was only around a tenth of a cubic mile. According to historical data, Mount St. Helens produced much less debris than the earliest supervolcanic eruptions at Yellowstone, which happened millions of years ago. In fact, almost 900 cubic miles of debris and ash were produced by the three massive eruptions that created the three calderas in Yellowstone National Park. What are the chances of a super eruption in Yellowstone? There are currently no indications of an impending eruption. 
Although there are still earthquakes in Yellowstone Park and the ground is still rising and falling, this is nothing unusual. The odds of Yellowstone exploding in any given year are 0.00014%, according to the USGS, which is lower than the likelihood of being struck by a civilization-destroying asteroid. Even so, it's not a reliable estimate because there's no guarantee that Yellowstone explodes on a predictable cycle or that another eruption is imminent. Super eruptions will occur on Earth in the future, but will Yellowstone experience any of them? That can't be guaranteed. Indeed, volcanoes eventually fade out. The heat rising from below and the relative cold from the surface are two opposing forces acting on the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone. The chamber might theoretically freeze and finally transform into a solid granite body if the heat from below is reduced. Additionally, it's important to keep in mind that the volcanic hotspot beneath Yellowstone is progressively moving to the northeast, or more precisely, that the North American tectonic plate is moving southwest over the hotspot. The U.S. Geological Survey team conducted research and published an article in the Journal of Geological Research Solid Earth, focusing on the rising land in Yellowstone. The article emphasized two recent instances of land uplift happening in 2013, 2014, and 2016. The researchers clarified that both events could be attributed to movements of molten rock beneath the surface that occurred 20 years earlier. Yellowstone Caldera, which sits above a reservoir of molten rock, comprises three volcanic depressions, with the oldest one being 2.1 million years old, along with two rising domes. The caldera's size spans 30 by 45 miles, surpassing the size of certain countries like Bhutan, Rwanda, and Puerto Rico. It can be difficult to detect significant changes in large geographic areas. However, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory continuously monitors the volcano and its surroundings for any abnormal movements. Recent observations have shown periods of both rising and sinking, which are the basis of an article by the U.S. Geological Survey. From 2013 onwards, a specific part of the Yellowstone supervolcano experienced a rapid rising, with an increase of over 5.9 inches in just two years. Although this may not seem like a lot, it is actually the largest recorded rise in Yellowstone. This movement, known as the pyrogenic movement, has been observed cyclically in the Yellowstone area since the 1970s. Over the past five decades, the region has seen a total rise of 28 inches. Since then, there have been instances of rapid rising, sinking of the ground, changes in hydrothermal features, and increased earthquake activity. According to researchers, the current rising and sinking observed in Yellowstone is a result of underground magma intrusion that took place between 1996 and 2001. The excess magma beneath the surface caused the ground to swell between 2013 and 2014. The rising briefly stopped when a magnitude 4.9 earthquake occurred in the area, but it resumed between 2016 and 2018. Yellowstone's rising and sinking movements also impact its water-related attractions like geysers and hot springs. One noteworthy geyser called Steamboat Geyser, known for having the most frequent eruptions worldwide, has been erupting more often. In 2018, it had 32 eruptions, and in 2019, it set a new record with 48 eruptions. This increase in hydrothermal events is connected to the presence of shallow underground magma, as noted in the Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. Similar eruption patterns were observed in the 1960s and early 1980s. However, previous instances have shown that heightened geyser activity does not necessarily mean an impending volcanic eruption in Yellowstone. Hence, there is no need for concern regarding the increased geyser activity. Instead, it provides valuable insights into the ever-changing geothermal features of the park. Scientists and researchers are diligently monitoring and studying these changes to enhance our understanding of the underlying geological processes and their potential consequences in the future. So, as experts race to interpret the enigmatic signs and brace for potential calamity, the destiny of Yellowstone and the world remains uncertain. Can they unravel the concealed mysteries within this geological marvel in time? Well, only time will tell. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. 
While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.